Hi, very good afternoon to all of you. Wish you all a very happy and healthy 2023. In this year, we'll continue with our old tradition of sharing our outlook on economy and markets. If we look at global economy, inflation was running ahead of central bank's estimate in 2022. Central banks were caught on the wrong side and hence had to raise interest rates dramatically. As they raised interest rates, corrections started happening in asset prices all over the world. Bond prices as well as equity prices corrected. And today, investors seem to be overweight bonds relative to stocks because of the uncertainty. Globally, headlines continue to be a little bit negative all over the world, especially in Europe and America. China has abandoned its zero COVID policy and it's opening up its economy, albeit at a great cost to human life. Inflation, despite central banks' effort, continue to remain high and elevated. The big change which has happened globally is that negative yielding bonds has become extinct. There was a time when about $18 trillion worth of bonds were carrying negative yield. That means instead of investor getting money, he was paying to the issuer. Today, that has become zero. The world has clearly got reset where interest has moved from being negative to positive. Commodities spiked because of supply chain issues, because of demand related challenges. But finally, they all have started correcting, be it energy like oil or agriculture like wheat and other food products. So it looks like that in 2023, central bankers will have some respite from commodity inflation. The real challenge for central bank is should they raise interest rates or will inflation ease off? There are four scenarios visible right now. One, central bank continues to tighten interest rate and inflation unfortunately continues to remain high. In that kind of scenario, economies will have hard lending, growth will become negative, inflation will impact demand, and central banks will continue to raise interest rates even higher for longer. In that scenario, 2023 equity returns will be fairly mediocre or negative. This possibility of hard lending, let's say right now, is about 10% globally. The second option is that central bank tightens interest rates enough to lower inflation. And in that scenario, economy does soft lending. There is no, there is lower growth, but no recession. And in that scenario, markets are likely to witness positive return. This scenario will also be beneficial to healthcare industrials kind of sector. Likelihood of this scenario happening is about 65% as of today. The third scenario is where interest rates comes down and inflation continues to remain high. This will create slow growth, high inflation, 
and pushing central bank to quickly reverse their rate cut cycle. In this scenario, equity market will first go up and then come down. Probability of this thing happening is also probably 10 odd percent. The third scenario is central banks does a wonderful job. Inflation eases off even when central bank is stimulating economy. In that scenario, consumer stocks will do very well. Probability of this happening is maybe about 15 odd percent. Obviously, these are estimates. They can change at any point of time. As long as the world does soft lending or return back to the growth, markets will do well. In case of hard lending or soft or stagflation, markets will do badly. The central bankers are trying to tame inflation, but their approach is totally different. Bank of Japan raised their interest rate target from 25 basis point on 10 year yield to 50 basis point, and yet continued to buy JGBs. In fact, their buying of JGBs have actually gone up. So central bank on one side is saying that we will control inflation by raising rates, but other side, they are not tightening liquidity, they are not withdrawing liquidity. Put these two things together, the world is likely to witness a fairly walking left, talking right central bank intervention. Coming to US economy, if you see the inflation, it is varied from food products to second hand cars to traveling and so on and so forth. At least in the second half of 2022, US inflation is more driven by services and commodity inflation as shown previously have started turning negative. Will inflation be showing similar cycle like the 70s where it corrected post oil crisis, oil shock, and then it bounced back because central bankers were quick in reversing their fiscal, their monetary stance. And eventually it started coming down when Paul Walker raised US interest rates to substantial levels. Let's see what happens this time. In this cycle, Fed has raised interest rates much faster than any other cycle. And they have also raised interest rates much higher than any other cycle. And more importantly, Fed is not yet done. The rates are likely to go even further higher in next few months. As I mentioned earlier, Fed is walking left, talking right. Between 2008 to 2021, they added $4.8 trillion. But when it came to withdrawal to control inflation, they have only taken out $400 billion. Clearly, Fed is raising rates, but not taking out enough liquidity. Fed tightening so far has not slowed American growth or consumer sentiment. In fact, the impact on jobless claim also is fairly meaningless. You could see this blue line where despite Fed raising liquidity and taking, raising rates and taking out liquidity, jobless claims have continued to remain much lower than any other previous cycle. On one side, while jobless claims are fairly low, but anecdotal evidence does suggest that US economy is feeling some pain. In India, we live with our parents. I live with my mother. 
but globally that's not the scenario now americans are also becoming like indians from 29% of kids staying with this parents in 1960 today 48% of the kids are staying with their parents a lot of kids are staying with parents not because of love but because they can't afford an alternative accommodation or independent accommodation the past rate hike cycle tells that fed does climb mount everest but does not stay there for long the maximum peak interest rate was for about one and a half year a little more than one year in the 2007 cycle in rest of the places the fed's peak interest rates have quickly reversed in less than 6 months this time will fed raise interest rates and stay there or will it start coming down quickly we believe fed's hands are tied already us interest outflow is about 766 billion dollar on a trailing 12 month basis a 30 trillion dollar outstanding if interest rate goes up by 1 percentage point interest outflow will be 300 billion dollar extra 766 <coughs> will go up to more than a trillion dollar if fed raises interest rates by even 1 percentage on total outstanding debt there was a time when fed was borrowing at 0 and quarter percent today they are borrowing at 5 percent 4 and a half percent clearly fed's hands are tied because ability of us government to service debt and pay interest is restricted however fed continues to lead market to believe that they will keep rates longer and higher pre fomc minutes this was the expectation that interest rates will peak out somewhere in april may 23 and start coming down by somewhere around october 23 now people expect rates to go little higher touching almost 5% and come down little later indian economy so far has done well if we look at some of the headlines in 2022 it is fairly positive next slide please even the december headline has been mixed bag air traffic hit record high indicating that the rich and the middle class is back to spending microfinance nps came at all time high indicating that consumption at the bottom end of the pyramid remains subdued under pressure housing sale hit all time high indicating rich and middle class buying housing however october iip number came at minus 4% on a yoy basis which shows that manufacturing is feeling some pressure however again november core industry growth came at 5.4% petrol diesel sales also witnessed double digit growth so overall economic numbers continue to remain mixed there are some positive things happening and there are some negative challenges coming up next slide please economic activities are now near all time high it shows that impact of covid is now behind us even rural economy tracker has started moving up it shows that finally rural economy is getting its act together gst collection has been above 1 lakh 40000 crore for almost last 10 months which shows that at least the tax paying part of the economy seems to be doing well led by gst income tax 
and other collection also remains well ahead of budgeted estimate. This year, tax revenue could be three to three and a half lakh crore more than the budgeted estimate. Companies are borrowing money. Individuals are borrowing money to buy house and buy motor car. And bank deposit growth has improved to double digit after a period of time. The NPA levels are witnessing Cinderella time, as Mr. Uday Kotak mentioned. PSU banks, private banks, and scheduled commercial banks all have witnessed dramatic drop in NPS. Manufacturing PMI continues to remain high in expansionary mode. And if you notice the right hand side picture, there is a wide gap now between India and other markets in terms of PMI. PMI talks about the future indication. In India, manufacturers are positive of growth. In other markets, including America, people are expecting recession. The consumer sentiment for India is improving from the second COVID wave, and it is now almost touching Chinese consumer confidence. The business environment of India seems to be improving with ease of doing business. It should help us grab companies which are relocating out of China. New companies are getting registered at a faster pace, not only in manufacturing, but also in services and agriculture. This also shows that PMI's indication towards higher growth looks real. Private sector project announcements, that is information or announcements about making capital expenditure, capital commitment, is increasing at a faster pace. We believe companies with their deleveraging and higher profitability stroke cash flow will be now setting up expansion plans. In few sectors, we have started seeing impact of PLI scheme in mobile from about $8 billion imports, we have moved to $3.3 billion exports. In toys from $300 million import, we have moved to $153, billion, $153 million of exports. Like 2022, India will continue to remain one of the fastest growing major economy in 2023, as well as probably 2024. This is also reflected in markets expectation. The time taken by India to move from $1 trillion economy to $5 trillion economy will be faster than what US did it. We will be behind China and Japan, which moved this one to $5 trillion at a much faster pace, but we will be ahead of US in transiting from one to $5 trillion. Our challenges continue to remain with trade deficit. Lower oil prices have temporarily eased trade deficit burden, but we need permanent solution. Oil, gold, coal, education, Chinese imports, this all continue to remain higher then what we can afford. If we can encourage domestic coal production, if we can encourage domestic travel and domestic education, if we can lower gold imports, if we can lower electronics imports, and if we can control Chinese imports, then this trade deficit burden will be behind us. Undoubtedly, our road is choked, our path is made, for controlling trade deficit, we just have to walk on the same. For a few months, we have been talking about subdued consumption. And this number shows how sales growth is negative in many day-to-day -day items like butter, 
ghee, cakes, biscuits, chocolate, tea, linen, towels, carpet, footwear. These are the items of mass consumption. And undoubtedly, there is a hit on mass consumption because of inflation. Our Rahu column starts when oil prices go above $100 a barrel. We did pay a price when oil prices moved between 2020 to 2021. Now, oil prices have started correcting. We have to hope and pray that oil remains subdued. On the fixed income side, there was steady increase in yields throughout 2022. It moved from 6.46 all the way up to 7.33, briefly touching 7.5 during June, July 2022. The Fed has been raising interest rates consistently to control inflation. Their speed and extent of hike has been the highest in recent cycles. In India, RBI is focused on inflation. And now inflation headline numbers are expected to come within RBI's tolerance bend from January 20, from first quarter 23 onwards. One good sign is that wholesale price inflation has moved from double digit to mid single digit. And the gap between consumer and wholesale price inflation has almost become zero. The RBI has done an excellent job in managing liquidity. When FX flows were high, RBI kept on buying rupee. When FX flows turns negative, RBI supplied dollar. But overall, they have managed liquidity quite nicely. And clearly, we have seen a reasonable correlation between liquidity and yield. From a global point of view, because Indian inflation is lower than global inflation, our real interest rate continues to look far better than developed market, including US. We are well placed in terms of our macro of inflation and rates vis-a-vis -vis rest of the world. We continue to believe that Medium end of the curve provides both carry as well as capital appreciation opportunity. Funds having maturity of anywhere between three to seven years will be something which one should evaluate as this part of the curve is well positioned vis-a-vis -vis interest rate hike and the pivot of interest rate cuts in the second half of current year. We will recommend investors to watch budget carefully. Last year, the fiscal deficit of 6.4% resulted into 11 lakh crore of borrowing on a net basis. But at that point of time, systematic liquidity was 9 lakh 10,000 crore. Now budget is expected to create deficit of 5.8 to 6.2% and borrowing program of roughly similar size at 11 lakh 50,000 crore, but liquidity is now just about 2 lakh compared to 9 lakh. In 9 lakh liquidity, 11 lakh borrowing program could easily go through, but for 2 lakh crore liquidity to pass through 11 and a half crore lakh borrowing program will be difficult. What are the debt investment opportunities? Well, you have medium term fund where carry and duration is ideally balanced. This fund is having a carry of almost 8.1% before expenses. State development loans provide better interest than government securities. This year, it is likely that state development loans issuance could be lower than what is budgeted. And with indexation, it makes perfect sense for HNIs to invest in target maturity funds linked to state development loans or state government securities. 
This has potential to improve returns by almost one and a half percentage point. Dynamic bond fund, as usual, continues to play volatility of interest rates and adding value to customer. Hybrid funds like Kotak debt hybrid scheme or Kotak equity saving scheme or Kotak equity hybrid fund all have delivered high single digit to double digit return over last many years. These products are suitable for conservative investors over and above the fixed income funds. Coming to equity markets, Nifty returns have moderated between 2015 to 2021 as inflation has eased off and over a period of time, market re-rating has started becoming far lower compared to the past. This is seventh year running where Nifty has delivered a positive return. Our markets have delivered better return vis-a-vis -vis global competitors. For example, in last eight years, we have delivered 8% dollar return on MSCI India. This is four times more than emerging market return and significantly attractive to Brazil and South African market where returns are elusive. Compared to our own historical standards, we are trading at a premium to emerging market. We continue to trade at our historical averages, but rest of the world has fallen behind, widening the gap between world and us in terms of valuation. <clears throat> if we compare our premium over MSCI world, we continue to trade at a premium to average price to book for the world. We continue to trade at a much higher P ratio vis-a-vis -vis world. And this is happening when our additional return on equity has normalized vis-a-vis -vis rest of the world. Based on our own historical averages, now we are trading in the higher percentile of valuation vis-a-vis -vis our own historical average. <coughs> Domestic market in 2022 was driven by retail investors who absorbed FPI selling during October to June 22. And their buying along with FPIs between July to December ended up pulling markets to all-time high. We are seeing first signs of softness in retail flows. Next slide, please. If we look at FY23 retail flows, which is the red line, it has started temp tapering compared to 21-22. Number of new DMAT accounts or broking accounts opening has also started slowing down. Will 2023 see lesser retail flows? As I mentioned before, we trade at a substantial premium to Brazil, almost three times plus. We trade at substantial premium to China, almost two times plus, and similar to South Africa, where also we trade two times plus. Now with this kind of premium valuation, it will be fair to say that some money will move to markets like China, Brazil, and South Africa in a tactical way to invest in cheaper market. When September 22 quarterly result came, the September 22 quarterly EBITDA was lower than what it was for corporate India during the lockdown phase of June 20. While because of the volume growth, the profit growth is visible, but clearly 
EBITDA margin is something which one will have to take care. Even from another point of view, it shows that Indian markets, Indian companies in September 22 have delivered a slightly below expected result. Street has started downgrading earnings estimate across many sectors. Even Nifty 50 consensus EPS estimate has started getting revised downwards because of the lackluster results so far in June 22 and September 22 quarter. Today, the world is expecting us to deliver. They want 3G from us, better earnings growth, better governance standards, and commitment to green and green challenges, green issues. If we deliver on growth, governance, and green, the 3G, then undoubtedly 2023 markets will deliver value or return to the investors. But God forbid, if we disappoint on either one of them, growth, governance, and green, there are many cheaper markets waiting for us to falter. From a valuation point of view, we are at the higher end of neutral range, a little further from here, and we will be taking underweight call. But till such time, our call remains neutral. Nifty P ratio against historical average of 18.4 continues to trade at 19, or price to book against historical average of 2.6 is trading at about 3. Not much changes in our valuation from a long term point of view. Market cap to GDP is now at 108%. Globally, it was 102%. It shows that we are now being perceived as more promising country than many developed and emerging markets. The highest number of 10 beggars in previous decade between 2011 and 2021 was in India at 20% compared to other markets where the numbers are mainly in single digits. To summarize, 2023 will be highly volatile. Be ready for volatility in 2023 as events unfold. Our recommendation to investors is to be marginally overweight large cap and be marginally underweight small and mid cap with neutral weight allocation to equities. In equity market, this is market for neutral allocation, no leverage, no trading position. And if you are investing, please invest via systematic investment plan or systematic transfer plan and with a long-term horizon. If you look at our SIP portfolio across equity fund, in most periods, they have added to value to investors over three, five, and seven years. And more importantly, returns are all <coughs> in double digit. <coughs> Even hybrid funds have continued to add value to investors with double digit SIP returns and consistent alpha generation. Our hybrid fund continues to play hair and tortoise payout. Kotak equity savings with 29% equity allocation over last eight years has delivered 37% upside participation whereas only 10% was downside participation. With upside downside ratio of four, Kotec equity savings does provide a hair and tortoise kind of return scenario where when market goes up, the fund runs like hair or a rabbit. And when market comes down, it falls like a tortoise. 
right now it is the season for tax planning jan feb march collects lot of tax investments and undoubtedly equity link saving scheme has done far better compared to competitor products kodak equity kodak tax saver fund also has a outperformance over benchmark indices between 2% to 4% since inception kotak flexi cap fund the largest equity fund in india has started bouncing back nicely we did suffer under performance over last 3 to 5 year basis but on a one year basis finally our portfolio call has started working and fund has started outperforming benchmark indices if we look at other assets more than 3000 cryptocurrencies that were listed on coin gecko in 2021 have failed which means their value has become zero central banks are buying gold at a speed which was not seen earlier effectively they have doubled their gold purchase from 200 tons to 400 tons in just few years as in when us fed rate starts cutting which market is expecting will happen in cy 2023 later part gold prices will get supported even further from current level if we look at gold to s&p 500 ratio that ratio also looks favorable on historical average basis silver also has seen stock withdrawal and compared to money supply silver prices seems to be on the way up from current level
Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.